So, chats, if you haven't heard already, uh, we got some kind of disappointing news um, that we will not be getting a beta 3. Today marks just two months until Overwatch 2's launch. We know players are eager to dive in and have seen questions about the possibility of a third public beta. While we continue testing Overwatch 2 daily internally, we are not planning any additional public beta tests. With all the valuable feedback we've received from Alpha 2, or sorry, Alpha and 2 public beta tests, we'll be focusing our efforts on launching the best game possible on October 4th. I mean, okay, like, realistically, though, okay, I hate to say it because I wanted a beta 3. This is, like, probably the best idea because... If we weren't getting it a beta 3, it would probably be like late August. And so it would go into like early September. So like beta 3 would probably look pretty similar to like the actual game. So, I mean, we just kind of have to bite the bullet. But, I mean, it still doesn't make any less sad, realistically. Um, but I probably will be playing a little bit less Overwatch in that downtime. But speaking of all the data they talk, they put out, they also gave us this, which is the creativity is the essence of discovery Overwatch 2 beta statistical analysis. Now, I'm not going to go through this whole thing and like read the whole thing because there's so much in here. You can read it in your own time if you want. But uh, it's interesting that they have console versus, um, you know, other or console versus PC data. And <clears throat> this is the unmirrored win rate. So when it was not like, you know, hero versus hero. And I thought this actually had some interesting data in it. One, PC Lucio was winning a bunch, but console won even harder. And also the diff this difference right here is, um, you know, was console winning more often than uh, PC? So heroes like Diva, Zarya, Orisa, Lucio, Roadhog, Bap, Bastion, Sigma, Sim, and Soldier did really, really well on console. While heroes like Ana, Genji, Farah, surprisingly, um, well, actually, they just had a high hit win rate. Period. They had a 52 and a 54. Um, actually, Farah had a 54. Echo had a 47. Uh, it's surprisingly that much lower, uh, but I guess that just speaks to how much more powerful it is playing on PC. But Farah had, honestly, probably the highest win rate, or one of the highest win rates, other than Junker Queen. Widowmaker, no, Junker Queen actually had the number one win rate, it looks like. Um, not in the mirror. And Farah was number two. That's so interesting. Huh. Where's Ryan? Reinhardt. So Reinhardt had a 52.9% win rate on PC. Probably shouldn't have played as much Ryan on the beta. I, I I probably could have let that number fall a little bit. Uh, and console had a 52. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, gauging popularity and power. Hero weighted usage uh, usage rate timeline. Okay, so that's insane. So Junker Queen and Sojourn got way more use than every other character by like miles. That's crazy. Um, Ana, no surprises at the top, though. I see Cass in here, Bastion. It's hard to see the rest. Uh, let's see that list. Fire. I'm gonna pause these real quick. Uh, what else? Hero, hero unmirrored win rate timeline. So, Junker Queen's unmirrored hero win rate was insanely high. That's interesting. I actually thought Junker Queen was really good, but kind of underpowered damage-wise. And if they... Increase her damage, they could they could nerf like her ult and her shift and stuff like that. But uh, for those who don't watch any contenders, contenders uh, is playing on Overwatch 2 on this patch that we played it before the end of the beta. And basically, uh, they're playing goats. They're playing Lucio Brig goats. And uh, apparently it is not fun to watch. Interesting enough though, Sojourn stayed about 50%. I actually thought Sojourn would be a little bit higher, but look at Arissa. So, Arissa got hard nerfed. Or, not sorry, didn't get hard nerfed. They just took away the fun part of her kit in a lot of ways. Uh, and on top of that, too, like, she wasn't that strong. They gave her a bunch of buffs at the end, and that's why it probably comes up a good amount. But uh, my own personal take was I really didn't like that they nerfed 
like the ability, like how often you get to use the javelin. The javelin was the most fun part of Arissa's new kit. And then they buffed how often you get to do the spinny spear. And I'm like, dude, that's that's literally boring gameplay. Like you're you're taking away the fun and increasing the unfun. That's probably why people didn't want to play Arissa. Because Arissa was decently strong at the end. Um The Queen Reigns Supreme. Yeah, the commanding show is the focal point of Queen's power. Yeah, that makes that makes sense. So this is the select stat rates and their percentage from average for tanks. First week of a rush to beta. So select stat rates. So let's see. So Diva had most of limbs or mostly most of limbs. Doomfist was. <laughs> oh my god! Look at how bad Doomfist was. Holy shit! 21% less final blows, 18%, 28%. Holy shit, Doofus was struggling. Um, Junker Queen was actually pretty much on par, but it also, I think that maybe she was the standard, and that's what they were basing it off of. Um, Arissa was terrible. Look at Ryan, though. Look at Ryan's deaths. Look at how, dude, look at this increase. Chat, when I told, listen, when I told you guys that. It started to feel a little bit more like Overwatch 1 playing tank on, on, on Overwatch 2 beta. I wasn't fucking joking. Look at Winston down here and look at Ryan. The amount of damage they were taking? Holy shit! Like, if you look up here, this is the actual numbers. 26,000 and 25,000. Compared to your Diva, Doomfist, Queen, Orisa, all in the 10,000 to 13,000 range. Roadhog around 16. Wrecking Ball around 16. Zarya around the 16, 15, 16 as well. But, like, my God. Like, they take so much more damage. They need extra help. This is why I say that when you talk about something like Ryan, you can't buff how much damage his hammer does. You have to buff the amount of damage he can take. I use this analogy all the time. We're playing, we play, we design a very simple game. We're fighting in an open field, right? Fighting in an open field. It's different characters you can play. One of them is a character with a, me a melee character. The other one is a sniper. The melee character can never beat the sniper. Why? Because he can't get there. So if you were going to buff the melee character, how would you buff the melee character? Blizzard's answer is to make the knife do more damage. That makes no fucking sense. That's the whole point of why I told you Ryan did not feel good in this beta, but he was still okay. So, regardless. Um, death rates of heroes when played with specific tanks. Wait, death rates of heroes when played with specific tanks first week of a rush to beta. Um, death rates of other heroes while tank is played. Oh, okay, I understand this. Death rates of other heroes when a tank is played. So your teammates, this is about if you play a certain tank, how often do your teammates die? Holy fuck. That is an insane chart. So, when you pick Wrecking Ball, you pick Wrecking Ball, you are, like, at least a 25% more chance to have your teammates die than Winston, who's the number two. I told you guys from the beginning of the beta that Sigma was unbelievably broken. Nobody listened to me. I, t I said to you guys Sigma was really, really strong. That's why he was just a must-pick in a rush league. Junker Queen is, pro is a fair number two, but think about that. Junker Queen's literally ability is to give her teammates a hundred healing, just like, boom, off of the bat. And she was more than double the teammate death rate of Sigma. She can literally heal them. Or I guess over health, but. Uh, then Zarya was better than Ryan. I have literally said that. I actually said that this felt this way. I told you guys, Ryan and D.Va, I thought Ryan was still slightly better than D.Va, but D.Va was one buff away from being broken. This is This is literally my chart. When I made a chart talking about what heroes were good, this is my exact chart, except maybe Winston might have flit a bit over here with, like, Doomfist and D.Va, like, in between this area. That was the only difference. That's insane, actually. Um, it's Norbin time. Oh, this is the Necrotic Orb. Uh, including new Moira ability, Necrotic Orb went live later in the beta. Okay, so this is hero, unmade hero unmirrored win rates. Okay, so let's see. So Doomfist got the buff, went crazy. Rissa got the buff, went crazy. Junker Queen got the nerf, went way down. Symmetra got 
Some I think some Metro got buffs and still went way down. Where's Moira? So Moira actually saw a pretty pretty decent drop in win rate. That's interesting. Huh. I wonder if there's more data on that. Uh oh, also Mercy. Mercy saw a small increase after the after the after the Guardian Angel changes. Interesting. Okay. What is this? Moira hero damage and final blows rate. Oh my god! So Moira was doing about on average about five to six fifty five hundred to six thousand damage per ten. And hero or final blows about five to six. And then after the change dropped to like four K. That's insane. This is actually a lot of cool data. So I'll make sure to have this linked. If you want it in chat right now, here you go. But um yeah, unfortunately, there'll be no beta 2, uh, which is kind of unfortunate. Or, sorry, beta 3, which is unfortunate. But, you know what? Hey, I'd rather them to work on the game and make it the best game possible for Overwatch 2. And uh, we'll make it. We'll make it. 